Good afternoon. This is Apostle Dr. Cynthia King Bolden Gardner, and I'm delighted to be with you here tonight. We are in Isaiah 43, Isaiah 43, and it reads thus, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Let us pray. Great God in Zion, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for everything in our lives, Lord God. You are so worthy. You are so generous. You are so gracious, so compassionate, so loving, O oh Lord God, and a great provider. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Touch this word, Lord, that it might feed your sheep and tend your lamb. In Jesus' name, amen. I chose Isaiah 43 because what we're actually going to talk about is the overflow portion. Amen? The overflow. He starts out, he says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And the word of God tells us, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. And he says, his name is Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. But not only do we have him as Emmanuel, God with us, we also have him as Christ, the anointed of God. Amen. So we have a double blessing there. It says, so, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. In other words, if something is overflowing, it has exceeded its boundaries. It's exceeded its banks. It's gone beyond its expected limits. It's left its container. Amen. And it says, it shall not overflow you. And I know in Ezekiel, though, there's a situation where the angel is leading him through the waters, and the waters are first to the ankles. Then the waters, I believe, go to the knee, then to the waist, and then up to the neck. And then he said there were waters that he could not pass. They were waters that were flowing around and out from beneath the temple. Amen? And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the positive connotation of overflow as opposed to the negative connotation. And when we talk about the positive connotation of overflow, we're actually talking about our lives. Amen? Our lives. We are the vessels of God. The Word of God says that in houses, there are vessels of honor and of dishonor. And so we want to be vessels of honor. We, there's an old song that says, make me a vessel for you. And so we want to be that vessel that God can use, but we don't want to just stay within our container. We want to overflow. As it says in Joshua 3.15, for the Jordan overflowed all his banks all the time of the harvest. Amen. It's almost like the river got happy and overflowed at the productivity, overflowed at the blessing, overflowed at the great, at the gross national product, the GNP. Amen. It got happy because of the fruitfulness of the land and the growth of the land and the blessing that it was going to provide for the people. We need to overflow as well. And Joel 2.24, the word of God says, And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. Amen. So we not only want to overflow, but we want to overflow with the new wine. New wine represents the sweetness of life. The things that we have gone through have produced a sweetness. Understand me, you don't just get wine out of nowhere. A grape vine has to be planted, and we don't want to be a wild vine bringing forth wild grapes and wild olives. We want to be a vine that reflects the planter who is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when we are planted, we have to be exposed to the sun. Amen? There's no turning a fan on. There's no uh, finding a place of shade. No. A grape and an olive have to grow in intense heat in order to reach its maximum potential. 
Do you hear me? Intense heat. In other words, you're going to go through some things. You're going to have some trials. You're going to have some tribulations. You're going to have some struggles. And these things are designed by God, amen, for us to be able to produce. When you talk about the exposure to heat, when we were in grade school, they talked about photosynthesis, amen. And so the more exposure there is to the heat from the sun, the better the, the uh, prospect of getting something worthwhile out of that grape and out of that olive. Now, the more exposure we have to the S-O-N, amen, the better we are and the more we produce. And I want you to take a look at that because Paul said that I may know him and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Then you get to the power of his resurrection. We want to skip all of it and get to the power of the resurrection and become the wine and become the oil. It doesn't work that way. The word of God tells us in Luke, the fourth chapter, that Jesus actually had to be driven by the spirit, by the Holy Ghost, into the wilderness to be tempted 40 days and 40 nights by Satan. If Jesus had to be tempted so that it would draw out the best in him, that he could show Satan who he was, that God could establish who he was and who he had sent, and that he was indeed the Messiah, the sent one, that he had power, that he could resist temptation, that he went to temptation through temptation like us, yet without sin, then guess what? We're going to be exposed to some of the same hazards in life, some of the same problems in life, some of the same difficulties in life, some of the same trials in life, some of the same tribulations in life. But the word of God tells us that we will come through. And I tell you, in Daniel 12, 3, it says, they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and they, they that bring many to righteousness shall also shine. Let me see if I can find that real quick because I always misquote it, but it's one of my favorite scriptures. But the bottom line is that as a result of doing the things that God would have us to do, we produce oil. In other words, we produce a light. We produce uh, like the, the olive oil and like the grape. We produce something within us in the form of a, like a photosynthesis. In other words, we show the glory. We show forth the glory of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When we produce, it says, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So we will shine, we will produce, we will grow, we will be a blessing, we will be productive, and we will overflow our banks the more we allow ourselves to deny ourselves. And to take up our cross, hallelujah, and follow him. The word of God is plain that he is going to mold us, amen, that he shapes us. He makes us a new creature, a new creation in Christ Jesus. And that's not something that's easy. If you take the potter, the potter puts a pot on a wheel and it spins around and around and around and it's exposed to heat. It's exposed to pressing and shaping and carving and spinning and, and all kinds of things. We have to go through some things. We have to go through the press in order to become the new wine and in order to become the oil. Amen. The new wine has a great smell, a great taste, a great savor, a great aroma. Amen. And you can't put new wine into an old wine skin. The word of God says, because if you do, it will burst it. 
Amen. And so we want to have that kind of dunamis power. We want to have that kind of exousia. We want to have that kind of anointing where we overflow the boundaries. In other words, we get beyond where we've been. We get beyond religion. We get beyond tradition and we overflow and become that new thing that God said that he's going to do. And with oil, if you take oil, oil like the grape has to be subjected to intense pressure. The olive oil like the grape has to be subjected to intense pressure in order to get the oil out of the olive. Huh? It has to be subjected to pressure. And the word of God tells us that we're to press for the prize, for the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We're not only to press, we will be pressed beyond measure. We will be persecuted. We will go through some things. Bless those that persecute you. Bless and curse them not. If they um, persecuted him, they'll persecute us. If they hated him, they will hate us. But the word of God tells us that he that endures to the end shall be saved. But once we become that wine, that from, from that fresh grape, from that pressing, then we have to go through another period. Because fresh grapes produce wine, but it's not the best wine. You heard them say, thank you, Holy Ghost. That in John chapter 2, the uh, bridegroom or the governor of the feast made certain that he saved the best wine for last. You have to go through a period of fermentation. Amen. You have to go through a period of aging, seasoning. Amen. Not just the suffering that you went through to get there, but then you have to go through some other phases of struggles and trials. But you've gained wisdom in the process so that when you gain that wisdom, glory to God, you now know how to navigate the waters. You now know how to navigate the uh, turbulence. You know how to navigate through the storms and through the hurricanes and the tornadoes. You know how to navigate in the midst of an earthquake. Whatever it is that the enemy brings to bear in your life, you've learned how to navigate it. And now you're in that period of fermentation and beyond that period of fermentation, then you are brought out and serve. Amen? Hello, somebody. And so it's the same with the oil. The oil doesn't have to age that as long as the grape does in order to produce an excellent flavor. The oil can be used almost immediately, but it is subjected to a real rigorous pressing process. When we went to Portugal two, three years ago in January, uh, we were there and we saw where the olives grew. We saw the press and the press was had a cylinder in the center and then it had like a flat area that was around the cylinder it would be like a candle holder and um the thing turned around and it was turned by horses or by mules or by a um i don't know what you call it a turnstile or a a, a handle and they were crushed they were crushed and the pits had to be removed and they continued to press and press and press and press until they got all of the oil out of the olive. But the fascinating thing about the oil is this. That oil, when you drop it on something, it spreads. It doesn't stay in its container. When you spill it on something, it spreads. It doesn't stay where you put it, where you can wipe it up. By the time you go to get something to clean it up, it's already spread to somewhere else. And if you try to pour it in your hand and contain it, you can because it will overflow the ridges of your hands and go through every crevice of your fingers so that you cannot hold it, even if you put another hand under that hand. 
And that's the way God expects us to be. When he told us, go ye therefore to go into all the nations and to teach them and to preach and to baptize them. When he told us that, he intended us to leave our boundaries, leave what we are accustomed to, leave that which is comfortable for us and exceed what was expected of us and go above and beyond to see that souls would be saved. That's what it means to have to be, to overflow with new wine and with new oil. Glory to God. We are that wine and we are that oil. We are the salt. We're everything that God has that he's going to use in order to save souls. And so when we are that new wine and we are that oil, we ought to have something about us that is distinctive. Amen. If you spill oil on something, even after you wipe it up, you can still see that the oil was on that wood. You can still see that the oil was on that table. You can still see that the oil was on the fabric. You can still see the oil that, was, that the person's forehead was anointed with. Even if they rub it off, that oil is still there. In the same way with wine. The wine, if it's spilt, will continue to roll and to flow, but it will also stain as it goes. It leaves a residue of itself. Amen. And we should leave a residue of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, everywhere we go. The anointing should leave something that says that we have been there. So we are to overflow where we've been. We are to find new territory. As Jabez said, oh, that thou wouldst bless me indeed, that thou wouldst enlarge my territory, that thine hand would be with me, and that thou wouldst keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. It's time for us to expand, not contract. The church has been contracting. You hear people talking about how the churches are smaller, attendance is less, and there are these big empty edifices. That's okay. Because if that means that those that are within are now witnessing without, are now worshiping without, are now seeking lost souls without, that's a good thing. That means that the new wine and the oil have overflowed. Amen. It means that the Jordan has overflowed its banks. But if it's just empty because it was the same old, same old, same song, same order of worship, same uh, time frame for the sermon, same procedure, nothing new, no praise, no adoration, no glory given to God, no glory coming in the house and filling the house. Then it's like the places in Ezekiel 1 where, and in 2 where the glory of the Lord has left the place. And if the glory of the Lord leaves a place, there's no need in trying to worship there because he's no longer there unless you're worshiping to try and bring him back in. So my prayer for you today is that you overflow your banks, that you do something different, you do something new, that you do what Jesus said do, which is the last thing we do. is Matthew 25. He said, when I was hungry, when I was thirsty, when I was in prison, when I was sick, all of those things, and I might add addicted to drugs, bound, uh, in jail, beat down, oppressed, depressed, whatever the situation or circumstance may be, we need to overflow our customary banks of taking care of our members, taking care of our church, taking care of the things that concern what we do and start taking care of the things that concern what the Lord said to. We need to overflow our banks and go above and beyond our boundaries, above and beyond the call of duty and do what thus saith the Lord. Do you realize that Jesus Christ he did rest, but the people followed him all of the time. 
And the way he was able to minister to them all of the time was because he would get some time and steal away. And he would sit at the Father's feet and commune with the Father. And the people would be waiting at the base of the mountain when he would go up. They would be waiting for him to come back down. If he went across the sh to the sea, to the other side, they would get in boats and they would follow him to the other side. People were thirsty. They were hungering for righteousness. New wine and new oil ought to quench their thirst. We as the church, we as the body of Christ, ought to be quenching the thirst of those that are dry, of those that are thirsty. That's how those dry bones in Ezekiel will come alive. It, when you prophesy to the bones, the bones come together. But in order for you to be able to prophesy, you have to have some oil in you. You have to have some wine in you. You ought to have some fresh water in you so that when you speak forth the word, that word comes alive and it begins to envelop everything that it touches and brings life to it. Oh, you got it in you. You can do it. It's going to take some effort. You might be shy at first, but this is what God has called us to do. We can't stand by and watch the earth burn. People that we know burn in hell and not do what we can to provide them with water, to provide them with our new wine, to provide them with oil. Now, they may not drink. They may be stubborn, but at least you've tried. At least you've witnessed to them. At least you've loved them enough to try to bring life to them. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by the Son. And he came that we might have life and that more abundantly. Do you realize that the wine was used to pour into wounds and things, to heal. The oil was used to pour into things to heal. We are, for the healing of the nations, we are the handiwork of God. We have been pressed by situations and circumstances, but now we are to flow, overflow, and exceed our banks. Won't you let God use you to save somebody? Won't you let God use your wine and your oil? The world is out there and it's suffering. It needs something fresh, something reviving, something that's alive. And you've got it. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. We are to be blessed and a blessing. The Lord has already told us how to go about it. Now, we just need to do it. I love you, God bless you, God bless you.